Mars fly. He's just looking for a new kind of midge larva to use in lakes. And I, if I remember correctly, I think the story went he was, I don't remember if it was when he was growing up in Seattle area or what, and was fishing this little still water with a older guy, and the guy just kept catching fish after fish with it. And John finally worked up the nerve to go and talk to this guy and figure out what was working. And the guy handed him a pattern that was real similar to this. Um, so he went and lost all of the fish um, using the pattern. So he went home and tied some more of them. And his, he does it with just the, or I'm not sure what material he used back then, but now he does it with just the clear stretch tubing with nothing in it. Um, and you can use any color thread you want because uh, that's what's going to show up through the base. And so I like to do it with the red um, and either a root bear colored or a gold colored crystal flash through the tube. Um, that's what works best up on the Logan. So on this one, I start my thread right behind the hook eye and then I start the tube in the front and bind it down. And then if you pull it and keep it stretched tight, it'll thin out as you tie. So I'll just tie it down right to the back of the hook and then let go of the tube and it just stretches back to its normal self. So what I'm gonna do is throw a couple half hitches on the front there. And then I'm gonna use the rotary on my vise and take that tubing and kind of hold it straight up and keep it a little tight so it thins out. And then just wrap it right up the body. Just one turn right next to the, right in front of the last. You don't have to overlap them or anything like that. Now you can do this hand over hand and you just gotta make sure you keep it pulled tight when you do it. So we'll come up about a eye length back and tie it off. Then always take that tube and pull it tight when you cut it off. And that way you don't have a little nub right on the front of it. I'll build up a little bit of a thread head. Um, you can do this with a different color of thread for the head if you want like a brown head or a black head or whatever, but I usually just use the same thread right across it. And then just whip finish it. And that's the whole pattern. The original pattern in his book calls to coat it with like Headsman or Sally Hansen's. Um, I've been using a little bit of UV fly finish too, if I don't have any Sally Hansen's, but it's just to coat the threads and help protect it. That's the whole fly. So I'll show you how I put the flash through the tubing here so you guys can be able to see it. Let me grab another one out here and I'll show you. So on this tubing, it's best to keep it relatively short, no more than five inches long at the most, because if it gets too long, um, it's too hard to manage the tube and get all of your material to come through. And so this one's, I don't know, maybe four or five inches long is all. But I'm gonna take just a single strand of the crystal flash. That's midge flash. Yeah. Um, and then the very center of these tubes are hollow. I don't know if it'll even show up on the camera or not. But to start it in, you just I take the crystal flash and get it started just in the very center of the tube. So you can see it's kind of centered in. And then I'll hold the tubing with my left hand and just take my right hand and just spin my fingers. And it corkscrews that crystal flash right up the center of the tube. Can you suck it in? You might be able to. <laughs> I've never tried it, doing it that way. I just take it and throw it through. Um, when I do this with like embroidery floss for some of my other patterns, I'll do it the same way, but I'll take some old like two pound tippet material and form a loop with it and push that through the tubing. But when I do my loop, I'll put the two tag ends in and hold those in my left hand and take the actual tube and spin it to work it up the tippet and then I'll leave just a little bit of a loop on the end and take one or two strands of floss put it through that loop and grab that tip and just pull it right through the tubing.
Uh, this one is the Daniels. I think this is the, yeah, this is the, the acetate acid. floss is that red uh, strand of floss that's right through the middle. The red strand. Uh-huh. And then oh. in the bottom of the packet, there should be a little partial piece of glow-in-the-dark flashaboo, which we'll use that for the ribbing, and there's a single black wire in your packet also that we'll use for ribbing. Those are all taken. Uh, the three that are taped together are for the prints. There's just a single black one okay, kicking around in there. Okay. All right, so this one, um, we're going to use the size 10 curved scud and with the white bead. And red thread, I use 70 denier UTC. Yep, that's bead there. Um, then I start my thread right behind the bead and take the crystal flash and tie that on right on top, right behind the bead. I just hold that right on top of the hook. And I wrap this down to about halfway down the bend. So that way the tail's kind of hanging below the hook, so to speak. So right about there, right about the bend. And then just loose wrap back up to the front because this is where we'll tie in the rest of our materials. And I usually go ahead and cut my flash now. Um, and I like my tails on this to be about as long as a hook gap is wide. So on my vise here, I know if I just come right off the back of the nub here on my Renzetti and just cut it, that's about the perfect length every time. And another thing I like to do is whenever I'm using crystal flash and tie multiple flies, I'll stick my strands in a pair of hackle pliers and just hang them on my vise. Then I can just run the flash up and tie it right on the hook again so I'm not digging for all my pieces everywhere. Um, so we're going to do some acetate floss next. Um, and in case you guys haven't ever used this or heard of it, um, it's made by Danville's. It comes 10 yards in a spool, and I'll get a couple hundred flies out of one spool. They're, depending on where you get them from, they're about 3 to $5 a spool. Um, but you take this and dip it in acetone, and it'll melt and harden on the body. It's the only floss that you can take and dip in acetone and it'll actually melt it. You take any other ear, like rayon floss or any of the other multi strands, all it does is suck up the acetone and then discolors it. It doesn't do anything. Um, so when I tie a lot of them, I like to take mine and put it on a bobbin so that way I can maintain my thread control a little better. And I just kind of moisten it a little bit. And I'll tie that down right on top as well. And then I'll take a single strand of black wire and then in your packets there'll be a little strand of glow-in-the-dark flashaboo also. And then the flashaboo when you buy it it's got um, these two little pieces of, I don't know if it's mono or what it is, that's wrapped around the, fl the flash. And I just take that and peel it right off because it doesn't serve any purpose. Okay. So I tied the floss in right on top of the fly and my two rib materials, I'm going to tie them in side by side and I just tuck them into the bead and tie them along the near side of the hook. And both of these rib materials you're going to tie together at the same time up the fly.
I'm gonna put everything back and stop at about the same spot that I stopped that flash. And then bring it all right back to the front again. And then I kind of hold the rib material out of the way a little bit. And I'll take one full turn with my floss behind the rib material. And then I kind of go right back up into the front of it and just start wrapping it forward. And I kind of hold it up to an angle and keep it tight. And then you just wrap it all the way up the body. Then I stop that one right behind the bead here. And just tie it off. Take that and just cut the floss. And then I'll take the two, the flash boot and the wire, and I'll hold them together and keep them tight. And then just wrap them together at the same time, and you're just going to barber pull it right up the fly. So you got about three or four segmentations before you hit the thorax. And it really doesn't matter on this one if the wire's in front or if the, and the flash boot behind it or vice versa. It's just kind of a two-tone effect for the ribbing. Um, I do the same fly in a chartreuse green that works really good. But if I put the flash boot, for whatever reason, I don't get as many fish on that as I do if I do just um, black wire. And I don't know if it's just the way the color reacts to the body or what it is, but this is uh, my most effective color and size. And so for the thorax, we're just gonna take a couple strips, or a couple pieces of peacock curl, and just tie that in right behind the bead, and just do four or five turns of peacock. take it and just whip finish it I'll be ready to go to dip so the acetone I use for this um, this is stuff you can buy at the hardware store just the normal steel can I tried doing it with the acetone that you can get for like the women use for their nail polish and stuff and it's not a strong enough acetone um, so I'll just take this, and one of these cans is about 15 or $20, and I've had this can for over two years, and I've still got acetone in it because I just don't use much out of it at all. So I'll take that and pour just a little bit of it into a baby food jar. And I only need maybe a quarter inch to half an inch of acetone on the bottom of the jar, so it doesn't take much. So then I'll take that fly now. Oh, there's my hook, hackle pliers. And then I'll take it and put it either in some hackle pliers or some hemostats. And I just grab it right by the eye. And then I'll take that baby food jar and I'll kind of tilt it towards me so all the um, acetones toward me. And I'll just take that fly and dip it in there. It only takes about five seconds at the most, just long enough for that acetone to permeate in. Just pull it out and I just kind of shake it a little bit to get the excess off and then just let it air dry.
I know this one I'm going to do it with some 015 lead free and I'll do about 12 or 13 wraps of lead on it. Oh. Caught it on the hook tip. Um, I've only tied with it one time and it was in a class two or three weeks ago with the Bountiful Club. I've got a bunch of them. I like it. You can really build up a smooth thorax. And this one's got kind of an oversized thorax on it. Um, this is one when I originally started playing with this pattern. I had a friend that was looking for something a little different to fish uh, for steelhead with up in Idaho. And I've been playing with the Jumbo John from John Barr. And so um, I've used that one quite a bit in the Logan River and other areas up in northern Utah and done well with it. And so I started just doing these ones because he wanted a little bit bigger print stamp, but he wanted a bigger body like the Jumbo Johns. And so I just kind of combined the two elements together. And he's done really well up in Idaho and Oregon with it. I don't know exactly where he fishes it, but he always comes back after every trip and has me tie up more for him. Because I don't know if he just loses them all to the fish because he's bad knots or what. But I'll usually send him up with a dozen. He'll come home and have me tie up another dozen for him. So this one, I'm going to start it off with some 140 denier just to kind of build up the body a little bit and do a little smooth transition ramp up onto the lead but you can do it with 70 denier if that's all you've got that brown? yeah this one's brown and then I'm gonna tie the fly with black but this is just the 140 I brought with me so I do it just to kind of build up that ramp a little bit it takes a little less time like I said, you can do it with the 70 in it. Will work as well. And then I'll just tie that off with my 70 here and trim it off. But if all you got is black or brown thread, you can do it with brown thread as well. And that's when I come down to about even with the end of the barb. And I always tie a little bit of a bulb right on the end here to help keep my biots flared out just a little bit more. And then this one on the tail, I tie it about as long as uh, between a half to a full hook gap width is the length of my tail. I'll take those two and oppose them and I just hold them right in front of that thread bulb I just put on. And then when I get them right in position to kind of cinch that thread down it helps flare them out just a little bit more. Then I'll take those biots and I'll just tie them down right across the top of the hook. Um, if I have ones that are a little bit longer, or if I'm using like the O2O lead, I'll tie them right down to the lead and then clip them off so it'll just help smooth that transition up onto the lead a little bit better. And just tie that down really good. And I'll take my three colors of my lead wire now. And I'll tie all three of them in at the same time. And I tie them in along the near side of the hook. I'll wrap that down all the way to where the biots are. Or where I tied those off and then I'll bring my thread forward again. Then this one I'm actually going to clip my thread off and then I'll tie it back in. It makes it easier to wrap all this wire at the same time. So the best way to manage your three colors of your wire together is I kind of lay them out so they're straight and not curled around one another.
and then I'll pull them towards me and keep them tight. So I'm going to wrap all three wires together at the same time. And you're just going to cover the whole shank of the hook with them. And if they start to twist, then you just flatten back out with my fingers. And just keep wrapping it up. So this one, at first, it's a little tricky to keep them so they're all laying flat and not wrapping right on top of each other. So if you start getting too big of a bulge, then you've got to kind of unwrap it, go back over and fix it, and then keep wrapping forward again. So I was keeping constant tensions on that wire, all three pieces at the same time. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, brown wire, and then you'll do white for the wings. And so I'll wrap those up to just past where the lead ends, kind of at the start of my thorax. I'll tie my thread back on, and then tie off the wire. Trapped my thread in there. And then one thing that I found that works really good to cut all of these off at the same time, so I just take an old pair of fingernail clippers and use those to clip them off. Because then I can get right down close to where I tied it off and be able to cut it as flush as possible. Yeah. You can like helicopter them off if you want, but then you got to do it one at a time. Okay, so then what you'll tie in next is your um, thin skin. And I do it so it's about half of a hook gap wide. Fib, do you actually got to tie your flash in first? So that'll be the last thing to go over. So the flash, I just tuck it right up into my bead. And tie it on, try and keep it centered on top. Then I'm actually going to wrap back up over the top of the wire a little bit. With everything. So I, when I end my thread, it's right in front of where the hook point is. So that'll be the distance of my thorax. I'll take that thin skin next, tie that in right on the top of all that. And then for the dubbing, I use the Bronze Peacock Arizona dubbing, but any color of green, kind of peacock looking dubbing will work for it. Um, I've tied it before with kind of a brownish Arizona dub. I've done it with the orange before too, but the peacock seems to work the best, at least on the Logan where I fish it. I'll take it and just dub that thorax up. I do a fairly healthy sized thorax on it. I'll take that thin skin and pull it right over the top. Bind that down and then I'll take my flash and put that right over the top of it. And then I'll do the next step is the your two white biots for the wings. Mm. 
When I turn them on so the wings go about right about to the halfway point on the body or just a little bit beyond. And then if I were going, like when you go and coat the, I'll usually put a little bit of UV resin or something right across the back of that flashback just to build it up and help with the flash. I'll put that on first before I tie the wings on. Um, I forgot to do it on this step, but I'll do it on the next one. And then this one, I'm going to do a little wet fly collar on it. So I'll take just a little piece of hen back. And, um, this one I'm using just a bronze hen back feather for my wet fly on it. Take it and peel all the fluff off the bottom. Then I'll kind of preen the fibers back a little bit and tie it in by just the tip. What kind of hand was that? Just brown? Yeah, it's just a mottled brown. Now tie it in with the shiny side up. Then I'll take it and oop. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'll just kind of moisten my fingers a little bit and just kind of preen the fibers back. And just two wraps. And the wet fly hack color on it is completely optional. I fish it both with and without. Um, my buddy that fishes it for the steelhead prefers to have the color on it, but it's been effective for me both ways. So it's completely optional whether you like to put it on or not. Then after I have that on there, I'll just kind of hold those back with my fingers. Do a few more wraps just to kind of secure it all down and then wet finish it. And that's the jumble wet by the prints. All right. Dave always did want it direct. Okay, so this next one we're going to do is the meat whistle. Okay. So you guys will want, you'll need your 90 degree jig hook that's in the packet that I gave you guys. Um, and also out of the packet you'll need your squirrel, the rubber legs, and the uh, bronze braid material. Um, on this one we're going to do a size medium cone head on it, either a brass or a tungsten, whatever you happen to have. Um, I've got some extras with me if anybody needs one. I got some if anybody needs any. Okay. I do too. My larges are the same size as your mediums. So. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right, so. I, we always knew you exaggerated size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are right. so old. So what I'm going to do on this one is, this is another John Bar pattern. So you'll put your cone on first and kick it towards the back. And then I start the thread right behind the eye as it starts to come up. I'm going to build a little bump right here. And what this is doing is it's just helping hold the cone in place. What thread are you using? I'm sorry. Uh, this one I'm doing a 140 just for the bump and then I'll tie it with a 70. So but you can... Black or brown? Uh, this is brown, but you can do this with a 70 denier too, either with a brown thread, olive, orange, whatever color meat whistle you're doing. So I'm just building up a little bit of a bump here. And then occasionally I'll push that cone forward and see if it starts catching yet. And as soon as I feel it start to kind of catch on, 
then I'll stop building up bulk in the back and then I'll come right into the front of it. So it's almost there. So this is why it's really good to add the 140 because it doesn't take nearly as long to build that bump up. Okay, so there it's just starting to catch on. Then I'll do a couple more wraps to hold it on there. Then I'll kind of push it forward and hold my thumb and forefinger behind it just so the bead can't slide back again. I'm going to build up a little bullet head right in the front of it. And this is just to prevent the cone from sliding forward all the way onto the eye of the jig. I'll take my thread, whip finish that off. And then take just a little bit of super glue or head cement, wherever I stuck mine. And I'll put just a little bit of glue or head cement right on that front bump. And that just helps seal that thread one so that way it can't unravel on the fish's teeth and it helps hold that cone right up in the very front of that fly as well. I'll take that cone and I'll shove it right up to that little bump that I just put on there. And then I'll take my 70 denier thread now I'll start that right behind the cone. And I'll take just a little piece of my gold wire or whatever color wire you happen to have with you and tie that in along the near side. And then take this braid material, tie that in on the top side. and wrap those together right back to the bend of the hook. And then bring your thread forward. And then take that braid material and just wrap it right up the body. And I do it right up to the back of the cone and then tie it off. And what you'll do next is you'll actually take the hook and pull it out of your vise and put it in upside down. And then I'll take your squirrel and I measure it so the tail is a body length long or a little bit shorter. And then you're going to take it and you're actually going to pierce the hook right through the hide so it sits flat on top of there. And then you'll take your hook back out and push that squirrel down so it's tight against the body. and then pull it up so it sits right on top of everything. Well, split the hairs back a little bit right behind the cone here. And I'll take that squirrel and tie it off right behind the cone. And tie that off and then trim the squirrel. And I'll take the end of that squirrel and I'll actually push it right up into the cone to help fill that in a little bit. I missed it. Did you pull over that or you just... No, but I just pulled it right up over the top of the body. Okay. And then I'm going to take that wire now and I'm going to lash that squirrel down to the body. So there's a couple ways you can do it. But what I prefer is that very first one, I'll just kind of part the hair a little bit. And you can either take the hair and part it and push the wire through, or what I do is I come right along the body, right on the hide, and just push the wire right through the body. And you'll trap a few hairs that way, but you trap far less than if you just come right over the top and shove it down. And let's do that in about three or four places. Okay, 
again, just taking that wire, going right against the hide and pushing it through the hair. And then I'll wrap that wire in a couple places right behind the cone before I tie it off. And this one's a size two hook. Um, this is another John Barr pattern that I love. And when he tied these originally, he ties them on size one aught to four aught and uses rabbit. And he developed this fly as the fly rod version of the jig and pig for bass. I generally tie mine on size one and two and use squirrel using all the exact same techniques, everything. Gives me a lot thinner profile and smaller body. I um, use this a lot in smaller still water lakes. It's really effective for me on Daniel's Reservoir in the fall, especially right around October is when I do the best. And I'll go out in about 15, 20 feet of water and put this on an intermediate sink line right in the middle of the lake and strip it right through the middle of the water column. I don't bounce it across the bottom or anything like that to imitate the crawdads like they're designed for. And I don't know if they're taking it as a crawdad that swim in or if they take it as a trout or like a little minnow or what, but an olive and the orange are really effective in October on Daniels. So then you'll take that hook and you'll put it back down. And especially on these, it's critical if you're using the Gamagatsus to keep your hook point down as much as you can because you'll just stab the hell out of yourself if you don't. Um, so the next thing I'll take is, I'm gonna use a little bit of Polar Flash on this one. You can use Flash Shabu, Crystal Flash, whatever your favorite kind of flash material is. I'll just take 10 or 12 strands of it. On this one, less is more because it is possible to put way too much flash on this fly. This one, I'm just doing the gold polar flash. I'm going to take it and fold it in half over my thread. And then come right down over the top of the body. lash it in so it's going right across the top and so this is actually going to be the bottom of the fly when it's in the water but for now it's the top of the fly and then I take my flash and I just trim it so it's about the length of the squirrel or just a little bit less then I'll take my two rubber legs and I'll do the same thing I'll wrap them around or I'll actually take these and tie two of them along the far side. And then I'll bring them up underneath the fly to the near side. And tie them in the same place. So they're just side by side each other. On those ones, I'll do them the same thing about the length of what the squirrel zonker is. So the next material then, is we're gonna do a marabou collar on it. And so I'll do like a orange or a burnt orange marabou. Now you can do it with brown if you've got brown or whatever color the main body is. You're just kinda imitating the same color scheme throughout the fly. So if I'm doing the olive ones, I'll do olive legs and an olive flash, things like that. So I'll take this marabou now, and I like to do kind of a big bulky collar, so I'll use the whole tip end of the feather rather than trying to peel some off the sides. I'll kind of measure that up to where I want the marabou, not quite as long as the tail, but just past the bend of the hook. So I'll take that and lay it right on top here, and I'll lash it down with about three sh strips, and then I'll take that marabou and I'll pull it around so it kind of helps veil that whole bottom side. Take so and cut it off. And then you can either take your hook out and invert it again, or if you got a rotary, just flip your vise over. So you got your hook point up now, so this is where it's really good to be cautious. And then I'll take one more feather and you'll do the same thing. And this one, you can have it just a little bit longer, um, but you don't want it super, super long. So again, you always hold it in with three wraps. 
I'm gonna take that marabou and just kind of wrap it around. So it kind of veils around everything. I'll take that tight off. And then you'll take the other part of your squirrel that you didn't use yet, and you'll come right on the end that you're gonna be towards the head of it and peel some of the fiber, the hair, right off it and just dub it right onto your thread. So we're gonna do a dubbed head on here just to cover up the whole tie-in area. So this is one that you can use if you wanna do kind of a hot spot on it, you can do a little bit different color dubbing or if you don't wanna keep using all the squirrel hair off this, you can, if you got a package of squirrel dubbing, you can do that, you can do rabbit dubbing, anything like that. But in the original pattern, he just called for it to come right off the strip. And it doesn't have to be super bulky or anything like that in here. You're just doing a little bit of a dubbing collar just to cover up that tie-in area. And then I do a little bit extra right on the front here just to help and close that gap right behind the cone. Yeah, and just a couple of whip finishes on it and it's completed. the completed fly and it's a little bulky and matty right now but once the scene gets wet it'll really slim down and takes on a real good profile and you can do it in just about any color scheme you want all right so I got that pink bead on there a nice lovely pink thread Dave's here in two weeks. So, take my thread, go all the way down to the, just at the bend of the hook. And just a good, kind of a light olive green marabou. And this one, I'm just gonna take the side feathers for the tail. Yeah. So I kind of measure it out so the tail is going to be about the length or about a hook shape long. I just do loose wraps at first just to kind of hold everything in and then I'll wrap it down tighter here in a second. Yeah, pink thread. And then for the body, I'm gonna use some of this olive palmer chenille. And this one I'm doing it with a size medium. And I've done these with the polar chenille and the palmer chenille is a lot better for this particular pattern. And so this is on a size 10. I tie these all the way up to a size 6 in both olive and root beer brown. So I'll take this and tie it in right in front of the marabou. Bring my thread all the way forward again. And just wrap it forward. I'm not going super tight on the body. I want it a little sparse. I 
Um, I haven't ever used this as a strawberry just because I've never still water fished strawberry, unfortunately. Which is really sad, I know. But this one works really good. Um, Wellsville is where I use it the most. Um, I've done well with it on um, Manaway for the trout. And then I'll tie this down even as small as a size 12 for the bluegill. And they just hammer it. Especially in the spring when they're just getting ready to spawn and they're up in their weed beds and starting to get real aggressive. Just take this and I'll just sight fish right in the little weed pockets with my four weight. And just throw it in and just kind of strip it a couple times just to cover the hole and then I'll pick it up and throw it to the next hole and just fish it right in the pockets. I don't add any extra weight to it or anything like that. Just that pink bead kind of has the hot spot, yep, and it's kind of helps pull the or push the water back a little bit. And I'll just grab like a piece of Velcro or an old toothbrush, just kind of brush this out to get out any trapped fibers. And just fish that on like my four weight or my six weight. Um, sometimes I'll fish it with another fly. And other times I'll fish it just as is and a real slow hand retrieve right across the weed beds. It's my favorite go-to um, damsel nymph and it's never let me down. I'll have 40 fish days with it some days and other days it'll be two fish. Just depends on if the trout are keying in on damsels a lot or not. But even on 40 fish days that's me being out on the water for 8 to 10 hours. So it's a full day to catch that many. But It's pretty good though. <laughs> it's by fishing out, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, well, that's just real simple, easy go to fly. And I don't remember who showed me this when I got it from a guy that was not being.